It would be a wonderful world if we could just watch everything in glorious 4K, or even at the very least, full 1080p HD. But we've all been faced with that unfortunate choice when watching something that was recorded and encoded at a lower resolution. Do you watch it in a tiny little window to keep the picture sharp and just kind of move your face closer to the screen? Or do you blow it up to full screen only to have everything look like it was recorded on a potato? For years now, many companies have been looking for a better solution to this, or at least a partial solution to this, and it's called upconverting or upscaling. And while you mostly see it used as a marketing tool on newer DVD players or TVs, you've probably used upconversion at some point in your life, even if you've completely sworn off optical discs. For example, if you're watching a 480p YouTube video and you make it full screen on your HD or full HD monitor, then the video has effectively been upscaled to fit the screen. You see, that 480p video contains about 300,000 individual pixels, which might sound like a lot, but full HD resolution contains over 2 million pixels, with 4K being four times that amount. So there just aren't enough pixels then in low res video to actually fit the whole screen without doing some kind of a conversion. Now modern displays themselves have logic that can apply an algorithm to a lower resolution video clip or even something like your BIOS as you're booting up your computer for the first time and it, what it can do is guess what the missing pixels should be when it expands the video to full screen. Unfortunately, a lot of the time it just plain doesn't look very good. For Dang. example, if the display recognizes that there's a lot of you know, grass in Sound of Music, it'll fill in that grassy area with basically big chunks of gigantic green pixels that looks pretty nasty. Now, upscaling logic can try to smooth out the edges of those lines so they don't look so blocky, but this amounts to basically an anti-aliasing effect as opposed to something that really makes it look as though it were actually shot, you know, in 4K, for example. So wait a second then, Linus, if it's better than nothing, how do I get this up conversion then? Can all screens do it? And if all screens can do it, well, what's the point of those up-converting DVD players that I see at the store? Are they just snake oil? Not exactly. So DVD, it's, it's right in the name, is a digital format. But most early DVD players only had analog outputs like component video. This means that the signal is getting converted from digital to analog and then back to digital again when it goes onto your flat screen TV. This conversion and reconversion ultimately leads to a loss in quality. So modern upconverting players have digital outputs such as HDMI to avoid doing so many conversions, and they also have their own more sophisticated upconverting logic that is arguably better than especially what an older TV would be able to do on its own. Remember though, that upscaling isn't a real substitute for watching native high definition or 4K content, and an upscaled video is always not gonna look as good as something that was shot natively and encoded in higher definition. So specifically, no matter how good your algorithm is, and they're always trying to sell the upconverting capabilities of this new TV when it runs at a resolution for which there's no freaking content available, no matter how good it is, you can expect some blurriness or other visual artifacts from the processor guessing where the pixels should be. But you should notice a slight improvement, making it at least a way to breathe a little more life into your standard definition videos as long as you manage your expectation and don't think that it's going to be as though The Wizard of Oz was shot on a freaking Ari Alexa. With that said, if the makers of The Wizard of Oz had asked me if they should use an Ari Alexa, I'd have said you should. Because today's sponsor is Squarespace. Squarespace with their 
tons of awesome templates that feature responsive design so your website will look great regardless of the device it's being browsed on is the easy way to build your own awesome website. It's affordable, it starts at just a few bucks a month, and if you buy a whole year of Squarespace, they will throw in a domain for free. They've got 24-7 support via live chat and email, and they've got tons of great features, including the ability to have a store on your site if you're not content with you know, making a blog or a portfolio or a team website or a company website, or I mean, I can think of a thousand reasons that pretty much anyone could need a website, and the best thing about it is that it just plain doesn't go down. We've had our Squarespace site, LinusMediaGroup.com, since we started working with Squarespace, and it just always works. If we need to make a small change, we go into the web UI, bippity boppity, change these, change this text, change that picture, and save, and we're done. It's all managed through the web UI, and it's so easy that even I can do it. So all you've got to do is head over to squarespace.com slash Linus, linked in the video description, to save 10% today. Oh yeah, and you can get a free trial too. So thanks for watching this episode of Fast As Possible. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then hit that button. If you didn't, then I guess you could hit the other button. Also, don't forget that we've got two other fantastic channels, including Channel Super Fun, where we've got this video that is definitely awesome and you're definitely going to want to check out because, come on, let's face it, you're done watching this video, so you need something to do, right?